Okay, so let's jump to the installation. Uh, open up your browser and log into your AWS account. And let's go create an EC2 instance. Uh, in the EC2 dashboard, click Launch Instance. And I'm going to go with 20.4 Ubuntu, so like that. Uh, I'm going to use T3 small. I would like to have more uh, vCPUs and more memory uh, for future videos, but for this video it's plenty enough to use the T2 Micro, uh, but I'll, I'll go with this. Um, let's continue to the next stage. We're going to launch only one and we're going to put it in the default VPC. Everything else stays the same. As far as storage, we don't need to increase the storage. Storage will stay the same default. Uh, we're not going to configure tags and we're going to use a default security group. Um, and all we need to do is review and launch. Let's review that everything is okay. Click launch. Now if you don't have a key pair, uh, you can create a new one or you can use whatever you're using right now. I'm going to launch the instance right now. And that's going to take a few minutes to spin up. Here we can actually give it a name. EKS2 box. So you can name it whatever you like. EKS2 Util box save. Uh, and now we're gonna wait a little bit. Now that our utility box is up and running, you can see here it says running and it passed the checks. You can actually see that it's running by going to connect under action and just connecting to it. And indeed, the machine is up. So, uh, well, we're, we're going to use the SSH client to connect. Uh, these are the instructions to connect to it. So, let's open a terminal and connect to our newly installed EC2 utility box. So, let's connect to our utility box through SSH. And we're in. And let's just update the machine as you sudo apt get update update and let's do the upgrades once it's done apt oh, sudo don't forget sudo apt get upgrade minus y All right, now it's running. Yep, now this the upgrade is done. Let's install AWS CLI tools. We're going to use the curl command. Paste. Now, if you're interested in knowing how to install AWS CLI, what we're going to do is you can Google installing AWS CLI. Uh, since we're using a Linux box, you can follow these instructions. So all you have to do is copy this one. Now it's downloaded, we're going to unzip it, paste, and we need to install unzip, so sudo apt install unzip. Go back, unzip it. 
switch to the directory, I think. Yep, sudo and do install. Paste. And now let's run AWS dash dash version. And we're running Python 3.88 and CLI 2.4. Uh, now let's install kubectl. Uh, to do that, let's just Google how to install kubectl. How uh, to install kubectl. And of course, Linux. And we can just follow the instructions. Let's download it first. Paste. And it's done. And then copy the installation. This is done, and let's check it. Cube CTL dash dash version. Oh, no dashes. And we're running uh, major one, minor 32, 124. So we're good with Kubernetes CTL. Now let's install EKS CTL. To do that, just go to Google. How uh, to install EKS CTL. Go to the Amazon link. And if we don't have on Bruin, oh, that's Mac. Where is the Linux to install or upgrade? Use the curl command. Copy this. Paste. Enter. This is done. Follow the second move. The extracted binary to user local bin. Let's do that. Paste. And EKS version. Paste. And we're running version 0.74. That is great. Now, the last thing we want to install is Helm. So let's do that. Helm. Install. Let's look for curl command right here. Copy. Paste. Change permission. Paste. And we're done. Let's check the version. Uh, it's Helm version. And we are in version 371. All right. Now that we installed all the utilities on our utility box, we will need to create an IAM user and give him a programmatic access so we can use the AWS CLI that we installed earlier. So let's go back to the AWS console and search for IAM and create our own, our own user. There it is, IAM. <clears throat> Click on users. Add user. We're gonna call it PKS admin and give him a programmatic access. We'll touch existing policy. Uh, for this purpose, for this video's purpose, we're gonna use uh, uh, admin administrator access. Click next, next, 
and create user. Now here you're getting the access key and the secret key. Um, you might want to download the CSV file because that's the last time you're going to see this screen. Um, let's go click download. And now we can use these uh, keys in our CLI. So let's go back to the console again. Run AWS configure. And let's provide the access key. Just copy it here. Paste. Provide a secret. Copy. Paste. Provide a region. Provide a region. As you asked, was dash one. And click enter. So now we're ready to actually install the EKS cluster from this specific box. Now that we have everything installed and configured, what we need to do is just install the EKS cluster. So there's a couple ways to install EKS cluster. Uh, we can actually type the commands, the EKS control uh, commands, or we can use a manifest file. Uh, for this demo purpose, we, we are going to type this commands. So let's just copy paste it here. Copy paste the commands and I'll explain the command. So we're going to use the EKS CTL tool to create the cluster and we're going to name it my EKS and we're going to use version 121 of Kubernetes. Uh, in this link, you're going to be able to see which version of Kubernetes Amazon is supporting. And we're going to go with the latest one that's 121. We're going to choose the region and our worker, we're going to put them in a node group. Uh, we're going to name the node, node group. And the node type means which uh, EC2 instance would you like to use for your worker nodes. I'm choosing T3 small. You can use the T2 um, micro, I think, for that, yes. And also, uh, how many nodes we're going to install. Right now, for this demo, we're going to install only two. So let's click Enter. And this process is going to take between 10 and 15 minutes. So I'll have to fast forward this one. All right, so as you can see, the EKS cluster has been installed in US West 1. And if we go to CloudFormation in our AWS console, we're going to be able to see what happened and what was installed. So you can see we installed the cluster and we installed the worker node nodes. So that's it for the install of EKS cluster. Now all we have to do is verify that the cluster actually working. So let's run the command kubectl get all. And as you can see, we have the cluster and the cluster IP. Let's see the nodes kubectl get nodes and we have the two worker nodes that we configured now after we're done playing with the cluster we can delete the cluster so we're not going to incur out of AWS charges so to delete the cluster let's go back to the github and copy paste the command it's very simple paste it here and it's basically deleting the cluster. All you have to provide is the cluster name. Uh, this process is going to take a while. Um, I think it's going to take around 10 minutes. So I'll fast forward this. All right, and now the cluster deletion process is over. You can see it here through the command line. 
He can also verify through the console. Let's go to EC2, go to our dashboard. And we're gonna see that we don't have those instances running anymore. And they're not there. And also let's go look at EKS. Sure, we don't have a cluster over there. And as you can see, we have no cluster. So, thank you for watching this video. If you like more content like that, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.